everyone, welcome to today's video. This is gonna be our second video uh, talking about tone. I'm Dakota Wagner and I'm one of the bass captains here at Evangel. And we're just gonna get right into it. This video is gonna be talking specifically about the pedals we're gonna be using to get a good bass tone. Um, so we've got the church pedal board that we've put together for you here as an example. And then I'm also gonna show you, this is my personal pedal board right here. And you'll notice there are some common elements between these two um, pedal boards, and that's the Aguilar Tone Hammer. And this pedal really is kind of the, the holy grail, so to speak, of tone for um, modern worship tone. It's kind of, um, there's nothing really like it, and everybody in the worship industry kind of knows this and so it's a pretty much a main staple everywhere you look especially at places like Elevation Worship in Bethel um, they kind of swear by it and as we get into it you'll kind of be able to see um, why that is so if we go ahead and look at the tone hammer here you're gonna be able to see a few different um, settings on here we've got a treble and a bass knob and we also have this mid frequency and mid level um, control. We've also got gain and we've got a master volume control. And so um, first thing to note when you're kind of getting orientated with this pedal is first thing you want to make sure if you're using the DI out on this pedal is that there's this pre post switch on the back and you want to make sure that that's pressed in and that's going to make sure that anything that goes through this pedal is going to come out of the DI instead of just sending a completely clean signal through the DI. And then the other thing we want to make sure is always turned on is this AGS function. This is going to be our uh, kind of saturation overdrive that's going to add some character to our bass tone that's really going to make it stand out in a mix. So if we go ahead, um, I kind of have things set up where I like them with this bass. And I'll go ahead and just play you a little bit of a sample of kind of what the tone we're going for sounds like. So as you can hear, that's kind of aggressive. It might be a little more aggressive than you're used to when you think of bass guitar, um, but something really important to think about uh, when you're in a large modern worship mix like um, here at Evangel is that you're dealing with a lot of instruments. You usually have two electric guitars, you have keys, you have synth going on, you have a lot of drums going on, and so you have to be really choosy with where you're sitting in the mix and how you're going to support everything else in the band. And so we'll go ahead and start with some of these EQ controls um, on the tone hammer. And the first one I kind of want to talk about is just the, the treble and bass controls. These are pretty self-explanatory. Um, usually when you're trying to get a bass knob kind of set where you want it um, with bass is you you generally aren't going to have to boost or cut it. Usually if you leave it um, kind of centered in the middle, it's going to be a pretty good starting point if the sound engineer decides that he does need a little bit more low end. Um, you guys can have that discussion and you can always add in a little bit more. I find with my P bass, with just where the, uh, the pickup sits, I need to bring up the bass just a little bit. But as you can see, that's not a very large adjustment compared to where it is at noon. It's just a slight boost. Same thing with treble. When you use um, this kind of saturation overdrive, you're going to um, get some extra string noise, that kind of thing. So bringing down the treble can help clean that up a little bit. Usually, once again, starting at the noon position and then hearing how things sound, you can always bring it back a little bit to bring down some of that aggression. Those are generally the easiest settings to kind of get dialed in because usually you won't have to touch them too much. But the next uh, portion here, which is the mid frequency, is super important for bass. And so um, when we're worrying about mid range, what we're going for is if you kind of imagine where all the instruments sit in a mix, usually you've got your vocals and your electric guitars 
up in the high frequencies, then in the middle you've got some of the piano and some of the drums, and then down below, it's really just in the low register of the bass, it's just the bass guitar. There is a little bit of the kick drum in there, but even the kick drum kind of sits in this low mid area. And so when we're EQing our bass, we really don't have to worry about boosting bass because we're the only one that sits down there. If anything, we want to make sure we don't boost too much so that we don't overpower everything and make everything muddy and inaudible. So usually with the bass uh, spectrum, we're okay just kind of being in our own space. We're not competing for anything. The low mids is kind of the the point where um, there's a lot of clashing in a mix. It's a whole bunch of just boominess from the bass guitar and there are things like the piano and the synths and some of the lower parts of um, electric guitars are all in that spot. So generally we want to cut some of our low mids so that we can make room for those people in the mix and also when we cut our low mids it makes our high mids come through a little bit more and the high mids is where people are going to be able to hear what we're playing. If we have the low mids up too high or the bass is too high, it can sound really cool and boomy, especially by itself, but it's really hard to tell what notes I'm playing. So especially when, um, if you're playing a line, if there's a special fill in a song, you're just wanting to carve out some space so people can actually tell what notes you're playing instead of there just being a rumble. So generally, um, what we like to do with the, the tone hammer is you can set which mids you want to control with this mid frequency. So in the middle is kind of the middle of the mids. And then as you start to go to the left, you're selecting more of the low mids. As you go to the right, you're selecting more of the, the high mids. And so generally what I like to do is you can take this level for the mids and I generally will boost it up pretty high almost all the way up and then I will play with my guitar and move that mid frequency knob and you can kind of hear um, which one of those what area of the low mids are starting to really sound bad and something we want to cut out so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so you can hear what that'll sound like So you can hear right about here in the low mid areas where it really starts to get really boomy. Um, it's really um, thick and so it's really hard to um, make out any clarity in the, in the tone. So now that we've kind of figured out which frequency um, we need to cut, then we're just going to get the level and we're going to bring it down a little bit. I find somewhere in this range is pretty good to start and then you can kind of fine tune it to be able to tell um, what's going to work well. So now I'll go ahead and play. So you can hear it's a lot more clearer. You can hear the notes I'm playing and there's still that low end. So that's usually a really good place to kind of set the tone hammer up. The last thing on the tone hammer we want to look at is this uh, gain um, section. Generally the way we want to set this up is so that when we play with a pick or we play really hard, we're gonna get some of that overdrive. And then if we play soft, we're not gonna get any of it at all. So generally how I will um, get this set, and it's gonna depend on your bass. Um, with a passive bass, they don't have a whole lot of really loud signal going into this pedal. So you can have that gain a little bit higher. If you're playing an active bass, you might have to half this gain to get the same kind of sound. So if your bass is active and you have a mode to switch it to passive, um, it would work really well for you to do that. And if you have an active bass, um, you'll just have to adjust your gain accordingly. So for adjusting the gain, um, generally what you want to do is, if I were to play soft, there's almost no um, overdrive or saturation at all. If I kind of start to play a little bit harder with my fingers, you can kind of hear there's a little bit of saturation on it, just barely. And that's kind of a good place to know if you're in the right spot. 
So, and then of course, if I play harder, then we kind of get the full effect. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the gain up all the way and you can kind of hear how it starts to get a little bit out of control. This is with the gain all the way up. And then if I bring it down um, a little bit, you'll hear that we start to lose a little bit of that overdrive when we use a pick. So it's all about kind of figuring out where you want to um, set the gain so that you kind of can get that overdrive with a pick, but then it's still really important for it to stay uh, pretty clean when you play with your fingers so that when there's down moments or something like that, um, you can be playing appropriately uh, for that moment. All right, and so um, one other thing we have on this pedal board for you is this MXR bass compressor. And it's really gonna help, especially those of you who play active basses, um, to kind of tame your signal a little bit, to prepare it for um, going into the tone hammer. If you're playing a passive bass, like a Fender precision bass or jazz bass, it's pro I'm probably gonna say you're, you're gonna be safe probably not using the compressor at all just because the passive signal is so, um, doesn't have a whole lot of dynamic range to it anyways. It probably is in a space like this where with an active bass that's using batteries um, to power its internal preamp, you're dealing with a range that's more like this. And so we're gonna use the compressor to kind of just tame that a little bit so that um, we can send a, a better good signal to the tone hammer. So I don't have an active bass with me, but I'm going to show you how to set this up as if um, I have an active bass. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it on and we're gonna be going for really light compression. We kind of just wanna tame our active bass a little bit. So for ratio, we wanna set this to four and then for uh, release and attack, Generally keeping attack right where it is in the middle will be fine and then release if we just boost it a little bit we'll add a little bit of uh, extra compression and sustain to our um, base that's coming in and we're really just going to have to mess with these input and output knobs. So what you kind of want to shoot for is if you're playing really hard you're gonna um, wanna watch this gain reduction meter. So I'm gonna go ahead and play pretty hard and we'll see where um, the gain reduction meter starts to show. So you can see as I start to turn that input up, it starts pushing the compressor harder and we get to see more gain reduction. So what I would recommend is that when um, you're setting your input to kind of get it so that if you're playing really hard, you're gonna see about minus three dB of reduction on the meter. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the output so that it's the same volume as when I have the pedal turned off. So I'm gonna turn the pedal off, hear how loud it is, and I'm gonna turn the pedal on and see where I need to adjust the output so that it's the same. And so already you can see right in the middle, that's about where we want it to be. So I would say this is a really great starting point to set your compressor, um, to kind of just get a little bit of a handle on your active bass. And then if you have any questions, you can always talk to the sound engineer that's working that Sunday. Um, and you can have that discussion on if you need to compress more, um, what their thoughts are, um, and they'll be more than happy to help you out. So that sums up uh, how we're gonna be dialing tone on a bass guitar. Um, we talked about using the tone hammer and the different ways we can EQ it, and how we can set the gain to get the overdrive we're looking for in a worship mix. And then we also talked about using the compressor to kind of get a handle on our active bases so that we're supplying a good signal to the tone hammer. 
So that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching. And if you have any uh, questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks. Thank you.